Hello, I'm David Hurl, um, and in this session, I'm going to talk you through surveys and a little bit of an explanation around that. Surveys, of course, are a quantitative method that we would use a lot in evaluation and monitoring. Some of the planning steps. Firstly, you need to define your target population. You then need to think of your sampling frame and sampling method. Design the questionnaire. Plan the data collection schedule and the budget. And then we go through the process of data collection itself. In terms of designing a questionnaire, four key steps you need to think about. Firstly, decide on the data collection method. And by this, I mean, are we going to be using um, a paper-based system where we go and meet interviewees? Or are you going to use an online survey or a phone survey? So many options you need to think about, firstly. We then draft the questionnaire. Usually after drafting, it's important to pretest. Normally we find that we over put in questions initially. And so the pretest is a very good way to reduce the number of questions. And then we go through a revision. You might do this more than once. So it's worth getting this right because each time you do, you learn a little bit more around the questions and the data you are actually collecting. Good questionnaires are based on clearly defined, reasonable objectives, indicators, and target groups. It's quite important to answer these three questions at the outset. For what purpose are you conducting a survey? What specific information do you need for this purpose? For whom do you need this specific information? The process of pretesting. Test the questionnaire with a group <coughs> similar to your target group. And kind of work out which questions are confusing. Were any questions redundant? How long did it take respondents to complete the questionnaire on average? Again, don't make your questionnaire too long. Were the response choices clear? Look for any typos or formatting errors. And maybe some feedback the respondents gave you about the questionnaire. Sampling. How will sampling be done? You need to think about that in a moment. Data collection. Is the information going to be found? How are you going to record and store and which tools will you use? How and how will data be analysed? And the last stage, how will the information you collect be reported and shared? Let's think for a moment about the data collection method. So interview administered systems would be by phone or in person and self administered would be online and mail. And I think it's fair to say the mode of data collection will influence how the questionnaire works with respondents. So quite a bit of thought needs to go into this process. And also issues around very practical things. If you're going to go for an online system, is the internet available to all the potential target group? Is mail available to all the target group? Some of the considerations that will impact on your decisions, of course, are the resource limitations. Obviously, a lot cheaper to do an online and mail based system than an in person system. The amount of information needed, the complexity of questions, and the sensitivity of questions, all elements that will form part of choosing your data collection method. Telephone interviews, they're certainly convenient, and they take less time 
for a face to face than a face to face interview. But they lack personalized interaction. Not everybody can be contacted by phone. And we find that with a telephone uh, based survey, there's often a fairly high rejection rate. As compared to face to face interviews, very commonly used by us in the development uh, world, but it does take more time, but better suited to intimate subjects. So a lot of the community survey work we've done will largely be done on a face to face interview. Um, sampling. You have to decide on the sampling unit. So are you collecting data on a particular person? a household, a company, a community, etc. So we call that the sampling unit. Next, you have to determine the sampling frame. So what are the individual units of observation in your target population? There is um, simple random sampling. And this is the most basic uh, sampling strategy. Here, all units have an equal chance of being included in the sample. And the techniques are things like a lottery, a random number generator, or even picking out of a hat. Next up, we have a stratified random sample. Here, the population is split into groups based on categories relevant to the research interest. So a common strata might be geographic, urban or rural, gender, schools, public or private. Once you have the stratification, you then apply a simple random sampling technique to each strata. This is used when categories of the strata are thought to be too distinct and too important to the research interest. And it's used to oversample minority groups to ensure sample size. There's multi-stage sampling where randomization occurs at multiple levels. How do we calculate the sample size? Well, firstly, you need to know your population size. Who is your target population? You then need to consider what you want as your margin of error or the confidence interval. How much higher or lower than the population mean, i.e. the average, you are willing to let your sample mean for. It's usual to work off a 5% margin of error. The next consideration is the confidence level. How confident do you want to be that the actual mean falls within your confidence interval? Again, it's common to set our confidence level to between 95 to 99%. A 95% gives us a Z score of 1.96, and a 99% would give you a Z score of 2.576. The other uh, factor you need to consider is the standard of deviation. How much variance do you expect in your responses? We normally set this to 0.5 to ensure the sample is large enough. Enumerators, these are the people that will go out and collect the data for you. They should be identifiable and presentable. They should be very familiar with all the procedures and contexts. And be very sensitive as well so in a lot of our work, um, we might be collecting data, say, from women and the enumerator might be a man. So we need to be aware of that type of sensitivity. Again, how people prefer to sit or stand when being interviewed. So and also normal social protocols. 
does the interviewer first need to spend a little bit of time just talking to the interviewee before they immediately embark upon the interview? And there's the whole question of ethics. So you need to consider the any ethical considerations that might be affecting your survey and the type of questions that are being asked. In terms of staffing, data collectors, they ensure data is collected correctly, accurately and securely. The data manager, they are responsible for reviewing data, storing and backing up that data, sharing data and monitoring use. And then the third uh, category of staffing are the data anal and analysts. And these are the people who will clean, transform and analyze the data that's being collected from the survey questionnaire. Things you will need to consider. Your budget. Surveys can be expensive if involving a lot of travel. The time frame. Language. What language are you going to administer the survey? Any issues around gender and gender disaggregation? Any skills and expertise needed from staff who are going to be uh, administering the questionnaire? And of course, the content of the interview. So those are some sort of general comments I wanted to make around surveys and so on. In this section of the course, you will find some other videos uh, that talk a little bit more about surveys. You will find um, some documents around sampling. I think a general tip I would suggest for the sampling part, it's a very good idea to get a statistician to do that job for you. Unless you are trained in statistics, um, it's not something an amateur should do. So you know, quite useful and in fact almost essential, get a statistician just to help you work around that sampling framework. What is going to be your sampling framework? How many people will you sample? Uh, and so on. Interesting, one thing I, uh, about sampling is actually a good sample does not necessarily mean a lot of people. Um, and it usually, whenever I've done it, seems to come around three to four hundred. Um, it, it seems to be. So um, if you have a huge population, you will still find that the numbers will be around that four hundred mark. If you only have a population of 300, then you will still need to interview, in fact, all 300. So it's very hard to do a um, on a small group. Your numbers will be relatively high. So what tends to happen with the sampling is a small group. The number of people that you have to interview is high in relative to the target group, whereas a large group uh, it's a very small thing. So that's another consideration. If you only have a small group, well, you might as well interview everybody. And that is not a sample based survey. You can still use your questionnaire. But the good news is that actually is a census and you have got all the respondents uh, responding and that can be good. So that's a little bit around this section. Um, and again, as I've said previously, if you need help in any of this, please do contact me, David, and I will be more than happy to help you. Thank you.